Hi everyone, today I'm sharing my 15 things that I cannot craft without when it comes to card making. So since there are so many sales going on today, I thought that it would be fun to put together a video where I'm going to show you the most used products in my craft room. And when there are great sales, I tend to grab products that I will be using throughout the year, like adhesives and uh, tools that uh, they are great value for money and I like to invest on these types. And of course, I may throw in my cart a couple of products that are actually trending, but I know at the back of my mind that these are just products that I will be using just a couple of times. So I mainly try and focus on tools and products that I will be using throughout the year, pretty much on every project that I make. So let's start with adhesive. My favorite and number one of best of all is my Nouveau Deluxe glue. This is a liquid glue. It has a fine tip and it grabs paper really quickly, however it gives you a bit of time to slide the papers to make sure that you have the perfect alignment. It doesn't cloak, it dries clear, which means that no mess is going to show at the end, and finally it doesn't smell. So for me a good white glue is a must. Moving on to the adhesives, I absolutely love adding dimension on my cards and uh, if you follow my videos you probably know that. So I like to stock up when it is Black Friday on big rolls of foam tape. I mainly like to use this one with the red tape. The price is the best in the market. You get 36 yards of this roll which is going to last you for a long time and it is $14. I think it's awesome. I also like to stock up on these uh, handy little foam squares. I use them throughout the year for many, many of my projects. Another handy little tool that I tend to grab a lot is a needle tool. I always like to use those mainly to poke out little bits and pieces from my die cuts. I also use them for peeling off the backing from double-sided tape. There are many in the market like this one by Tim Holtz which is retractable and I also like the Spellbinders tool in one that has that brush at the top which is really helpful to poke out leftovers from the inside of the dies. And there is a similar one with a brush at the top by Sizzix. You will find everything linked down below so you can check out the prices and pick your favorite. Now since I love playing with details on my cards, I absolutely love this handy little tool which is an embellishment wand. It has a wax tip which makes it really handy because you can uh, really easily pick up tiny little pieces of paper or even uh, sequins and gems. There are available replacement nibs for that if you find that it's not sticky anymore. However, I'm going to show you how I like to work with it to make it sticky again. Just remember that this tip is made out of wax, so although it's not soft or pliable, if you wrap it with your finger, you will find that you get back that stickiness. So that's what I do and I have this tool for over a year and never had to change the tip. I will link to this one down below and you will be able to find it on Amazon as well, they have a great price and you can also find them if you look for rhinestone pickers as a keyword. There are other similar tools in the market, like this one that has two nibs on each side, a bigger and a smaller one, and it really is a personal preference which ones you like to use the best. I got the second one on one of my Simon Says Stamp card kits, but I still tend to grab the first one the most. Of course, you cannot craft without scissors. My favorite scissors of all times are my Tim Holtz scissors. These are by Tonic Studios. They are exceptional in quality. I have all three sizes and I tend to use the smaller one to do my fuzzy cutting. They are never ever going to dull on you. I use them for years and they are as brand new. They are non-stick so you can use them to cut out foam tape or double-sided tape. Nothing is going to stick there or if it does it's super easy to clean it up with a little bit of alcohol. I have many of these scissors throughout my house even in the kitchen and the previous version with the red handles are well loved by my husband now. Depending on the techniques that you like to do, you may find that some tools are a must-have. For me, these are the blending tools because I like to do ink blending a lot. There are so many different types of blending tools in the market and you have the option to find what fits best your needs. One of my favorites lately is the brass by Altenew. I find it is very soft and it doesn't leave any splotches, but uh, I keep on grabbing my older one by Ranger as well as uh, those uh, brushes with the handle. 
These are the picket fence ones and they come in a variety of sizes in a set which are in a great price at the moment. You will find them linked down below. You really don't need to have all of them, just pick a favorite, whatever you feel works best for you. I also like to use the smaller one by Altenew and these are the ones that I grab lately all the time. But out there there are so many options, just look around and find what works best for you. I don't have many of them, I have just a few and I use one of those brushes for each color family. So for this brush I would go all the way from lighter to super dark navy blue. And all I do is just wipe it off on a paper roll and then move on to the next color. And just because I get asked a lot, I never ever wash these brushes. And of course, since this list is for card making, you cannot stay away from a good black ink. Now, I always like to use a permanent black ink and there are so many different ones in the market. I usually work with the Altenew permanent one or the black extreme one by my favorite things. When you stamp your image with a permanent ink, then you have the option later on to use any of your favorite coloring mediums. You can go with color pencils, with watercolors, with alcohol markers. This makes sure that nothing is going to smudge or smear. So a good permanent black ink is a must. And of course you cannot have enough of them in your stash, so I tend to grab a couple of different brands during the sales so that I can try them out and I know that I will be using them a lot in pretty much every project. And of course I have to mention white paper. My favorite, all time favorite is Nina Solar White cardstock. I tend to grab it on 80 pounds for stamping and coloring and uh, ink blending as well as on 110 pounds for creating my card bases nice and sturdy this is the perfect one it's nice and smooth really bright white i did try many different ones and uh, i think we can all agree that this is the best and since we are discussing tools and things that i grab on pretty much every project i cannot leave behind my paper trimmer my absolute favorite is the Comfort Trimmer by Tim Holtz. I have this for years and it cuts all paper and cardstock like butter. You can see I still have the old version and uh, it still works like brand new. The new one has a black handle instead of a red one. There are other trimmers in the market, the ones where you have the blade that goes up and down, but you do have to change the blade once in a while. With this one, you have a great investment. You will get it once and it's going to work for you for years. And of course, I cannot leave behind my glass mat. This is my one and all favorite. You see me work on it all the time. There are many, many advantages on working on a glass mat, but the number one is that it's super easy to clean up. Heat deposing is a favorite technique of mine. After all these years of crafting, it still looks magical to see that embossing powder melt. So one of my favorite tools is the heat gun. I like to use the wow one. And the specific tool that I'm using has two settings, one for drying and another one for melting your embossing powder. Another must-have tool for card makers is a scoring board. You need to use that to create your very own card bases in any size that you like and the scoring board always comes along with a pawn folder, which is a plus. Using a scoring board for your card bases is going to give them that professional touch. There are many different sizes of scoring boards and many different brands. I used to work with a 12 by 12 one, but I didn't find the reason to have such a big uh, tool on top of my desk. So I switched to this smaller one, which is by Dress My Craft, but there are so many different ones in the market. Another good thing to grab during the sales is a stamping tool. I tend to grab my Misty and this is the second version, which is a little bit better than the previous one. I know this is not cheap, it is quite expensive, but it is a tool that you will be working with it on pretty much every project. When you start stamping with this one, you will never look back. So it is a great uh, opportunity to grab one of them, especially if you find a good sale these days. Now I don't have the large Misty because I can't find a use for that, but I do have the mini one which is really convenient, it fits the standard card size on top, so you may want to check this one instead. You will find multiple links to online shops down below for all the products that I'm showing you today, so you can shop around and find the best price for everything you need. Now I'm going to show you a product that you won't believe how many times I grab for it during the year. I love adding details and a little 
touch of sparkle on my projects and I always love to add these gems. So I keep on using them again and again and if you are following my videos you have seen me using those little pots all the time. I love that this set comes with 12 different colors. This is by Pinkfresh Studio and uh, I have it for years and you can see that the pots are still full but I use them all the time. I think these are a great value for money. And if you don't have a die cutting machine yet, you cannot imagine the fun that you are going to have once you grab one. I think this is a great gift for Christmas if you haven't one yet. You will have lots and lots of fun and many hours playing with it. I love my spell binders and this is a platinum silk. There are so many different ones in the market and since this is my job I do have many of them, but lately I tend to use this one. I love the design, I love the colors, I never had any issues die cutting with it. And always remember that with a die cutting machine you get two tools in one because you will be able to emboss as well. If you don't want to invest in such a big machine you can always grab a smaller one to have fun and play with die cutting. This is one by Alta New, it is absolutely adorable. I've been using this one for years and I never even had to change the plates and I do a lot of die cutting for my projects. But if you do a lot of die cutting or if you don't have too much uh, strength on your hands and you don't want to use the handle you can always get an electronic one. I personally have a Gemini and I am super happy with it. So these were all the 15 products that I tend to grab almost daily when I am creating my cards. These are all great value for money because you will be using them again and again throughout the year. Of course you will find links to everything down below. I hope this video was helpful for you, especially for those who are starting out card making now. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I hope you all have a lovely weekend.